Hey y'all, welcome back to another video. It's Rachel here. So we are in San Antonio, Texas today and we're gonna visit a very special place called the Alamo. So we're walking there right now and um, let's get right into it. So we're gonna walk into the Alamo. It is open daily from 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. We came a little late because we were enjoying our Denny's um, lunch. So it's about 2 p.m. and this is the crowd that you're seeing right now. Not too busy, you know? So as we're walking, we see this beautiful building here. We're gonna walk inside of the church. And uh, fun fact about this, it's free. So you just reserve your tickets before you come here and uh, walk inside. Pretty cool, huh? Hi. So the one thing about the Alamo, you can't touch the walls, which is actually really good when you're, you know, being a tourist, don't want all that happening there. But you can take photos, just no flash photography. Welcome. Please remember the Alamo Church is a place of reverence and reflection. We ask that you kindly lower your voice and remove your hat for here. Heroes died to blaze a trail for all the Texans. Sorry, Dad. That's gotta go. So here at the Alamo, there's actually a lot of science here involved, including salt analysis and moisture studies. So if I read here, the stone masonry of the Alamo Church is deteriorating due to crystallization of soluble salts and by expansion slash contraction of clays embedded in some of the stones. Now both deterioration mechanisms are enabled by movement of water and moisture vapor in, into and out of the masonry. I've been developed to analyze these issues and understand how they relate to each other, such as salt sampling analysis and moisture studies and monitoring. Sciency. Can you hear me? Good morning. <laughs> Hi. This microphone's pretty cool. So here we honor those Alamo heroes whose names history did not record. There's a lot of names here. Heroes of the Alamo, 1836, February 23rd to March 6th. There's a whole nother wall of this too. Also, one really cool thing is he was from Wales. He was from Pennsylvania, New York, Virginia, Ireland, Massachusetts, Ohio. This is a worldwide range of heroes of the Alamo. England, Ireland, Texas, Virginia, Missouri, Kentucky, from all over the world. That's insane. When you think of the early Western adventurers, you mainly think of James Bowie from Kentucky and David Crockett from Tennessee. And they're also the heroes of the Alamo. The commanders. Could you describe what we're seeing right now? This was the Alamo. This is based upon the drawings of Green Beetle, Jameson, and Southern Virginia, and mm -hmm. the Alamo. Yeah. And Texas, he sent to Sam Houston to explain the defense of the place. So it's pretty much the way it worked in the morning, February 23rd, 1836, 187 years ago. We sent out our first tribe of Mexican Army began the siege. The, the, the north wall was much worse condition than Mala shows. The damage of the siege of it are in terms of the Wow. Such a whiz. I love that. That was so much easier than, than me saying that. Wow. The fort. The mm. fort really stinks. Mm hmm. It was full of five hundred Martin Perfect with the cost of the siege of a heart until we should be five. There are 23 cannons here. It's a large collection of artillery in West Mississippi and mm -hmm. North Mexico City. There's three to six trained men and men of muzzle in cannon. It costs us 700 men. So for him, almost four acres, 23 cannons on a bad fit. He can't hold this because a few hundred kicks in militia. Mm. So Buck Travis could hold those same four acres, and then the same 23 cannons, less than 200 amateurs, and 3,000 people sent in. Wow. Yeah, not so much. Someone wow. didn't do the math on that. No. Clearly not. Well, that was amazing. 
What's your name? Tom. Tom. I'm Rachel. Rachel nice Rachel. to meet you. Thank you so much. It's pretty cool. Ta-da. The church is about 80% original. The Spanish started building this church in the 1750s, and these walls, all the limestone came from the San Antonio area. So I ask that you not touch or lean on the walls to help with the preservation of the building. When the mission era, this room was used as a temporary sacristy. This is where the missionaries would store items and prepare for services. After Texas joined the United States in 1845, the U.S. Army used this building as a warehouse. They started using this as a warehouse years after the battle. The Army knew what happened here. They wanted to show they'd been to the Alamo. So soldiers would get their knives out, and they start carving their names and their initials all over the building. It's even on the front of the church. Well, I'm going to get this chain opened up, and I'll be able to go inside.
All right, so we have left the church and now we're gonna go see the rest of the complex. Theology for preservation. Favorite parts of the whole thing? Right in here. Conserving the Alamo Church means expert teamwork. And the excavation in front of you is a perfect example. This unit is against the outside of the Alamo Church north wall. Guided by preservation experts, the archaeologists' goal is to expose the foundation walls. Preservation arch architects, structural engineers, and stone and moisture experts can then assess them and develop the best treatment options. Only with strong foundations will the Alamo Church stand for generations to come. We just came from the Alamo Church and now we are in the gift shops right over there. There's the collection center. I don't think I've ever been there. And then the Alamo Hall. I don't think I've ever been there either. Um, and now we're in the Convento Courtyard. So there's so much to see in this courtyard. So let's check it out. This is, this is the ruins of the habitations of the friars and Indians refractory, kitchen, and other regular offices. Cool. The Indians formed as... You can read all that. Let's go check it out. <laughs> oh my gosh. The cannon. Cool. Look how big this cannon is. I'm like six feet tall. That's crazy. You're almost six feet tall. It's awesome. Is that one pounder? I don't know. Is it a one pounder? I don't know. You think? Looks pretty awesome. Ta da! Surgeons were Samuel Stivers and Amos Pollard. So sorry if I butchered your names. The departure of Stivers left Pollard as senior surgeon of the garrison in San Antonio. Hmm. Records indicate that the hospital was located in the second floor of the Long Barrack. Cool. You would have Parker was already made in the couch up to 20 pounds. And to load it, the first thing we do is open the pan. If you look in there, you can see a little pan there. And there's a hole in the barrel. So you take the Parker. There's another thing. If you're going to be in the line of picture this time, you had to have some teeth. You had to tear this with your teeth. So if you don't have any teeth, you're going to be a cover bearer. So you tear this with your teeth, spit it out, now you've exposed the gun powder. So you pour a little bit of powder in the pan, right in there, okay? You gotta remember to shut the steel. Then you take the rest of the gun powder, you pour it down the barrel. Now all you got left is some paper and a ball. You water them, stick that in the barrel. But you gotta get this ball and paper down on top of the gun powder. So I'm just gonna pull this out. Sticks. Oh my god. Until the rammer comes in. Hang on, gotta reload. So you pack it down, <laughs> pack it down in there. Okay. You, gotta remember, you gotta remember to put this back. Because if you don't put it back, you may shoot somebody with it, but you can't reload. Ah. A lot of times in the heat of the battle, they, they've even banned these from reenactors if the guys get excited out in the ah. reenactor field, they shoot with a friend and then they're big trouble. Yeah. And when you put it back, it takes all the fun right out of it. When you put it back, you keep your hand away from the barrel. Because if it goes off, it's a misfire. Actually, you're told to put it in with your feet with your pinky. If you shoot your pinky off, you still have three more shots to go. So, so anyway, I can put it back in this time. So now, you are, I'm sure you have to put the term here, she went off half top. And that term half top comes from this. It's called half top. Now I'm going to go to full cup. 
Okay, now let's see what happens when I pull the trigger. Do we get a pulse for that? It may not do anything. See the spark? Mm -hmm. Hopefully the spark would have ignited the powder in the pan, and hopefully the fire would have gone through the little hole and shot the bullet. I say hopefully, because one out of seven shots of these things is going to be in this one. <laughs> how long does that wow. flint last? Flint? The flint. How long does that last? It should last. How many shots? Uh, they estimate around 20 shots. 20, 20. But every time you pull the trigger, it's going to knock some more. Yeah. And I've seen a guy have a brand new, uh, just put a brand new flint in, he pulls the trigger and it shatters. Yeah. You can always carry Very, a pouch like full of, Yeah, it's just mother nature. So you can't have a, a soldier this time, I have a little pouch full of flints that I have a dozen or so. And you're required to load one of these things in 20 seconds to be in the line. Is that right? Yeah. And that's just one shot. One you're shot. Everything's one shot. You're the privilege to get shot. The only thing right. is flint. Got it. Okay. Again, both zero. And this is what Travis had, the commander had on the shotgun. And uh, cavalry guys like the shotguns because you, you can actually load these on a horse. Interesting. Interesting. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. In honor of children and women of the Alamo, there's that. There's a few other awesome things to read about here. 16 pound Alamo cannon. Where's that one? Where are you? Found buried near the present day intersection of Houston and Alamo streets. Dang. And then this over here is more archeology span and preservation of the Alamo. We know that the Long Barrack could have had up to 10 different living services over its lifetime. Today, the lowest and oldest is about two feet underground. This is the Long Barrack archeology. span Ooh, guys, there's this over here. This is cool. Erected in grateful recognition of the supreme act of heroism of the 32 men from Gonzales who gave their lives in the Alamo in response to the appeal of Travis. This is such a very nice looking monument here. Like, that is not going anywhere. That's beautiful. I like that one a lot. Moving right along, we have this beautiful pathway here, the Alamo Well. This provided water for the people of Mission San Antonio de Valero in the 1700s for the Alamo Defenders in 1836. Oh, you want some money? Come see. Look how much money is down there. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. So up here is the Japanese monument. I'm gonna butcher this name, but we're gonna try. Shigetaka Shiga. Shigetaka Shiga. Did I do that right? Um, a Japanese geography professor prevented this, presented this granite monument to the Alamo in 1914. If you look really close, there's some awesome etchings in here. That's cool. That's awesome. To the memory of the heroes of the Alamo. That's awesome. Crockett, Bowie. These are awesome. I like that. And to here. John William Smith and Emily West Morgan. Beautiful woman. Why, hello. She was the Yellow Rose of Texas. Awesome. Now if you look over here, we have James Bowie. Pretty awesome. Of course, iconic, iconic James Bowie. James Bowie represented the fluid nature of the frontier, born in Kentucky but living in Missouri and Louisiana. Whoop, whoop, Louisiana. 
um, before finally settling in Texas along the way. He gained a reputation as a deadly duelist with a knife. The Bowie knife. Got the flags. And then over here, we have Hendrick Arnold, Mr. Arnold himself. So the second to last person here is Juan Sagan. Sagan? Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan? 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 Hello, Juan. Hello, Juan. William Travis. Hi, sir. <laughs> He accomplished much before his death at the Alamo in 1836. A native of South Carolina, Travis was raised in Alabama, where my Alabama's at, um, where he taught school, edited a newspaper, and passed the bar, <laughs> passed the bar, all before turning 21. He moved to Texas in 1831 to escape the dead end of failing marriage. Now I want to show you the outside of the church through the courtyard. <laughs> the last time we came here at the Alamo, I don't know how old I was, like, I was young, like four years ago or so, um, they had reenactors in the middle of the street, shooting guns, it's pretty awesome. I met one of, the, one of the dudes who was so laid back, so chill, he's probably like 6'7", and I'm 6'1", so I was like, wow. Alright, so let's check out the front of the church. This is exactly where the reenactors were. They basically have a whole community around here, a whole city based on the Alamo. It's pretty cool. This is it, perfectly preserved. And um, the inside is so cool. The outside is even cooler. And then the people and the surrounding around it, even better. If you look over here, they have the post office and the courthouse. It's all based on the Alamo, which is so cool. And then they have some monuments over here and that really awesome um, monument over here as well, which we will check out. So let's go check this man out over here. Hello, Mr. David Crockett. Hi, you are a big fellow, big man, big hands. Wow. Say hi to David. Goodbye, we're gonna go see someone else. So here's, excuse me. I'm trying to make a video here. Thank you. So here is one huge monument outside and it says, from the fire that burned their bodies rose the eternal spirit of sublime heroic sacrifice, which gave birth to an empire state. It's pretty awesome. Yep, and all the names. It's crazy. Erected by the state of Texas 1936 with funds appropriated by the federal government to commemorate 100 years of Texas independence. It's pretty awesome. Hey, how y'all doing? So this is the Defender of the Alamo, an 18 pound cannon, very similar to this one. It was mounted to defeat the Alamo's southwest corner. 18 pound cannon. That's crazy, that's crazy. Now that's really big. That's a really big cannon. I'm six feet tall and that's definitely two of me. Crazy. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed learning about the Alamo as much as I did. If you're ever in San Antonio, Texas, make sure to give the Alamo a visit. It is definitely totally worth it. And if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, comment down below what you'd like to see next, and make sure you subscribe to see more content. Bye guys!